What is up YouTube and welcome to another video. I've recently a uh, while back started a docker development guide. The link is down in the description for all of the videos and I often get the question how do I debug code that's on my machine um, inside of a docker container. So in this video I'm um, specifically going to show you guys how to do that using Python. So we're going to be taking a look at a Python debugger and using some of the features that Docker provides us to create efficient builds and insert a debugger inside of our Docker image and then also make sure that that debugger doesn't end up in our production image. And I'm going to show you how to do all this in just a couple of minutes. So without further ado, let's go. So the first thing I like to do is keep my source code separate from my Docker file. And the reason I like to do this is to keep things very simple. So when a new developer looks at my repository, you can see that the source code is over here and the Docker file, which is the source of truth, is over here and describes all the dependencies and how to run the application. So when we take a look at the code repository, we can see I have a Python folder and I've separated my source code. So I have my Docker file and then I have my source code inside of the source folder. The link for the source code is down in the description. So feel free to take a look and follow along and you can see exactly how to debug Python inside of a container. The other thing I like to do to keep things simple is not have multiple Docker files. So the same Docker file I use for my debugging and development is the Docker file that I use for production. So the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is the base layer. So everything from the from statement till the next from statement becomes the first layer and I call that base. And what I do is I say I'm going to use Python 3.7. I'm going to use the Alpine version, which is a very light Linux distribution. And then what we're going to be doing is take advantage of Docker's layering um, for builds to make the build faster. So what Docker does is it runs the build from top to bottom and it caches each layer. So in this case, it's going to pull this image and then it's going to create a working directory called work. And then what I do is I copy my requirements TXT into the container. And if we take a look at this requirements TXT, this is all my dependencies. So in my application, I'm going to be running flask. So you can fill out your list of requirements. And then what we're going to be doing is doing pip install. Now, the reason I don't copy my source code in first thing is I want to take advantage of Docker's layering. So I copy in the requirements first and then I run pip install because I know that the requirements.txt is not going to change very often, but the source code is. So only when I change one of the file, one of the libraries inside the requirements txt do i want to rerun pip install and now what i'm going to be doing is i copy the rest of my source code in and then i set an environment variable for flask and this is my py file so that i'm just using flask in this example you can apply this to any other python application you're building or any other web server and this becomes my base image now, when we take a look at Docker multi-stage, what it allows us to do is we've defined all of this stuff in our base. And now to get a production image going, we say from base as prod, and then we simply start up Flask. So the same thing we're building is the same thing we're deploying. So that's the advantage of multi-stage. So you don't need two Docker files. And now the next advantage of Docker uh, multi-stage is we can create a debug layer where I can say from base as debug, and then I can go ahead and install stuff that I need for debug and that'll make sure that these things are not in my production image so I can do any temporary stuff within here and what I do is the startup command as I say I run Python but in this stage I run the, the debugger instead and I tell the debugger to run my uh, flask application now let's take a look at the debugger you can head over to github.com on the Microsoft org there's a ptvsd um, debugger this is the python debugger package for visual studio and visual studio code so we're going to be using this now there's a lot of documentation on it if you want to use it in different ways one is just to run it with the cli so you can debug a script file directly um, i'm going to be showing you this method and i'm also going to be showing you how to debug flask as a web server and you can use that methodology to debug other things yeah, 
So if we take a look at the Docker Compose at the root of the repository, we'll see I, we have a Python section and I have a container name Python. I have this example image of the source code that I just showed you. Um, and then what we said is we're going to be running the target debug because we're interested in running the debug layer of the Docker file. And then what we're going to be doing as well, and this is important, is to open up the debugging port. So we're going to be using the default port for the debugger. And then our application, because we're running Flask, is running on port 5000. So we're going to be opening port 5000 as well and open that on localhost on port 5003 so we can access the application. Now it's important to understand how these debuggers work. Normally when you start up an application, you run either your Python file directly or you run, let's say, Flask. So you can see in my production image, I say Flask run. But now when we debug, um, we have to start the debugger instead and the debugger, debugger will run your Python file or the debugger will run your Flask application. So in this case, I say um, CMD, I wanna run Python and I want to start up the debugger on 0.0.0.0 and then also you want to expose that default port and the critical thing is you want to tell it to wait because otherwise what will happen is when you start this application up it'll simply start the debugger and then run your script and just run it all the way through um, and then you won't be able to attach to it so we tell the debugger to wait so we can manually attach to it then the other thing is now if you're running a um, just want to test like a like a py file directly you'll just say main.py or whatever py it is you want to test um, but because we're running flask what will happen is the web server will run now this is good for just debugging a single script but if you're running like a web server or something you want the debugger to wait um, basically you want multi-process because you want that debugger to run as well as the web server to run as well otherwise the code will just run all the way through and your your application will just stop so what you want to do is say multi-process and then run flask or whatever web server it is that you run so with that done what we want to go and do is say docker compose build python that'll go ahead and build our image and then we'll want to do docker compose up and that will start our application now that our application is up, our debugger is running and it's also waiting for us to attach. So now if we go to our application in the browser, um, you'll notice that it's sending empty response. That is because we explicitly said wait and we're running multi-process as Flask. So this program is basically waiting for us to attach a debugger. So what we want to do is go over to the extensions and what you're going to need is search for the um, Python extension and that'll give you this one by Microsoft. You wanna go ahead and install that in extension. And then what you want to do is go over to the debugger and then click this little gear icon and this will open up a new launch.json file. That file is located on the root of your repo under a .vs code folder. It'll create a file called launch.json and yours might be empty or if you have debuggers already configured, they will be here. But you can get this file from my git repo if you need it. So you can just copy it from there. You're only going to need this um, block of text over here, the section here, which is the Python attach, the Python debugger. So what once you have this in place, basically this will configure the debugger and tell it where, how to debug remotely. So it's very simple. We just give it any arbitrary name. So, and we say the type is Python and the request is attached. Now you need the, the VS code extension for Python in order for this bit to, to be detected. You don't, you do not have to have Python installed to make this work. I don't have Python installed locally. It will throw an error saying, Hey, I can't find Python, but you don't need that because we just need the re remote debugging feature. And then what we want to do is map our local path. So this is our workspace folder, Python source. So this will basically map Python source into the remote root, which is slash work. And we've defined work inside of our Docker file. And that's where our code is located because that's where we copy the code in in our base image. And that's pretty much it. We also show a port and where to bind to. What we want to do next is click on the debugger and then select our Python attach and hit the play button. And this will start up the debugger. So we can see the debug console down here. Note that I don't have PyLint installed. I, I always get these errors because I don't install anything on my local machine. Everything is running in Docker. So we see here serving Flask. It's all ready. It's all good. And we can see our server.py. I've got a breakpoint here. 
um, which has already triggered. So that's quite cool. So we can hit play to go beyond that. And now our application is waiting because we've got this one route called hello. So I can go over to my browser here and hit enter. And we can see the breakpoint got triggered for hello world. And then you can see the call stacks on the left. You can add watches and you can um, check local variables as well. So this is as simple as this. This is how you attach a remote debugger into a container. And this allows you to debug things that are running in a container on your machine as well as in the cloud. So you can even use things like Kubernetes and Kubernetes port forwarding to debug um, containers that are running you know on remote machines and that's exactly how simple it is to debug code remotely inside from your machine inside of a docker container now i have a ton of other videos on docker development they're all in the github repo in the link in the description also i'm working on a kubernetes development guide so if you're interested in that please go and check that out as well remember to hit the like and subscribe button and until next time peace